This is the homework for 625, 626, 627, and 630B. For 625, as Sally and George practice for the SAT, their scores on practice tests rise. Sally's current score is 850, and it is rising by 10 points per week. So since it's rising at a constant rate, we know that it's a linear equation. It can be written in the form of y equals mx plus b. On the other hand, George's current score is 570 and is growing by 50 points per week. His is also growing at a constant rate, so it can be written in the form of y equals mx plus b. Both of these are linear equations. So we have um, Sally's is rising by 10 points per week. That's the rate of change. X represents the number of weeks. And then her current score is 850. That's the initial value or the starting value, which is 850. George's growth is 50 points per week. That's his rate of change. And he starts with 570. That's the B or the y-intercept or initial value, starting value, what you start with and the rate of change. What you start with and the rate of change. So now we have to determine when will George's score catch up with Sally's. So that means when will they be equal? Well, one way of finding out when their scores will be the same <clears throat> is by setting it up as a system of equations. And we can do that by using the equal values method. Now the equal values method is when you set each equation equal to each other. Since both of these equations are in y equals mx plus b form, if this, if Sally's is y equals 10x plus 850, well if that's what y equals, we can plug it into George's equation because y equals this. So if that's what y equals, then we can set them up equal to each other. So here is Sally's 10x plus 850. That's what y equals. So here we have it, 10x plus 850. There's Sally's. And here's George's equation. They're equal to each other because we want to find out when they will be, when they will have the same score. So now we go ahead and solve for x. And remember, x represents the number of weeks and we're trying to find out the number of weeks that they'll be equal to each other so here we want to move the variable to the side that has a greater value so 50 is greater than 10 so we're going to subtract 10 from both sides of the equation creates a zero pair 50x minus 10x equals 40x still don't have x by itself so now we need to move this term over to the left. Inverse property of addition is subtraction. Creates a zero pair. What you do to one side, you do to the other. 850 minus 570 equals 280. Still don't have x by itself. This is multiplication. Inverse property of multiplication is division. Dividing by 40 because this creates the giant one. 40 divided by 40 is one. 1 multiplied by x is x. What you do to one side, you do to the other. 280 divided by 40 is 7. So x equals 7. And George's score will catch up to Sally's in 7 weeks. That's when they will have the same score. For part b, if the SAT test is in 12 weeks, who will score highest? So we need to determine in 12 weeks, if x equals 12, who will have a higher score? So we're going to get, take Sally and George's equations from the previous problem. And remember, x represents the number of weeks. And we're, we need to find out in 12 weeks we'll ha who will have the highest score. So we're going to substitute x with the value of 12, 12 weeks. And now we're going to solve both um, equations. 10 multiplied by 12 is 120. And then for George's, 50 multiplied by 12 is 600. Now we simplify the 
the rest of the equation. 120 plus 850 is 970. 600 plus 570 is 1,170. So in 12 weeks, George's score will be 1,170, will be higher than Sally's score of 970. Problem 626, we need to solve for x. So we need to get x by itself. Before we do that, we need to simplify this equation by following the order of operations. So we need to do multiplication first. We need to distribute this negative 2 to both of these terms. So negative 2 multiplied by 4 equals negative 8. Negative 2 multiplied by negative 3x is a positive 3x. I mean positive 6x. Now you can see that we have like terms here. Positive 6x and a negative 6x. So we can, um, we can combine these terms. 6x minus 6x equals 0. And we're left with negative 8 equals 10. Well, that's not a true statement. So there's no solution. And what that means is there's no value I can put in for x to make this equation true. Problem 626b, we need to solve for x. And one way to solve for x is by using the fraction buster method to eliminate the denominators. And we can do that by multiplying each side of the equation by the least common multiple of negative 2 and negative 3. So here are multiples of negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative, negative 6, negative 8. The multiples of negative 3 are negative 3, negative 6, negative 9. So the least common multiple, the first multiple that um, can both be divisible by negative 3 and negative 2 is negative 6. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by negative 6. And here we have negative 6 divided by negative 2. Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is, negative, is positive 3. And on the right side, you can simplify this side by negative 6 divided by negative 3, which equals 2. So we're left with 3 that we're going to distribute to, this left, to the left side. And we're left with a positive 2 that we need to distribute to the right side. 3 multiplied by x is 3x. 3 multiplied by negative 5 is negative 15. 2 multiplied by x is 2x. And 2 multiplied by negative 1 is negative 2. Remember when you do distributive property, you have to multiply to each term inside the parentheses. Now we're going to continue to solve for x. We want to get the x values to the side that has a greater value. So we're going to subtract 2x from both sides. 0 pair. 3x minus 2x is x. The inverse property of subtraction is addition. So we add 15. 0 pair. 15 minus 2 equals a positive 13. So x equals 13. There's one solution. What's that? What does that mean? The only value that I can put into this equation is 13 to make this equation true. Problem 627. On the same set of axes, graph each line in the system shown. And what is the point of intersection? And does more than one exist? How do you know for sure? So here is our system. So we need to graph these two equations. Now, I put, um, instead of negative x, I wrote it as negative 1 over 1x. The reason why is because this puts it as in slope form, where it's rise over run, because negative 1 divided by 1 equals negative 1, which is a negative 1 multiplied by x is negative x. And I did the same thing for 3. 3, divided by, 3 over 1, or 3 divided by 1, equals 3. So I didn't change the value, but I put it in rise over run to help me graph these two equations. And then I have my y-intercept where it, um, it, um, this point lies on the y-axis. So to graph this first one, my, on the y-axis, I start at positive 2. 
and my slope or rate of change, it's a negative slope, so I know it's gonna be sloping towards the negative x values, and it has a rise of, or a fall, you can say negative one and positive one. Negative one, rise negative one, run positive one. Or rise one, run negative one. Rise one, negative one. For the second equation, I start at positive 6 on the y-axis, that's my y-intercept, and I have a positive slope of rise 3, 1, 2, 3, run, positive 1. Or I can do negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and a negative 1, because negative 3 divided by negative 1 is still positive 3. 1, 2, 3, negative 1. Negative 1, 2, 3, negative 1. So here, where these two lines intersect is called the point of intersection at negative 1, comma, positive 3. Now, does there, um, does one, more than one point of intersection exist? No, because if you have two lines, um, they will never intersect more than, um, than one location. For problem 30b, we need to solve the equation. And again, we're going to be using the fraction buster method to eliminate the x's and the denominator on both sides of the equation. So the common multiple is x. So we're going to multiply each side of the equation by x. Well, for the first term, x divided by x is 1. And 1 multiplied by x is x, and 1 multiplied by 3 is 3. So we get x plus 3. To the second term, x multiplied by 2 is 2x. On the right side, x divided by x is 1, so we're left with 1, I mean x plus 5. Here we have like terms, so we're going to simplify by combining like terms. 2x plus x equals 3x. Now we still don't have x by itself, so we want to get the x's to the side that has a greater value, so we're going to subtract x from both sides. This creates a zero pair. 3x minus x equals 2x. Inverse property of addition is subtraction, so we're going to subtract 3 from both sides, creates the zero pair. 5 minus 3 is 2. This is multiplication. Inverse property of multiplication is division. We're dividing by 2 to create the giant 1. What you do to one side, you do to the other. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 multiplied by x is x, the identity property multiplication. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So x equals 1.